want to jump back for a minute, though, and um, uh, before we maybe entertain any questions from the co-investigators or myself, and, and give you some more insight into our study members themselves. It, you know, as I've tried to um, reinforce, the reason why this study exists today is that we've got tremendous cooperation from almost 4,000 men for most of their life. And, but we've had very little face-to-face -face contact with the study members. And so I just give a little bit of glimpse into some of these things. The man on the right is Dr. Matthews, and the man on the left is Mr. Joel Aldred. So um, I'm not sure whether it's okay to give people's names or not, but it's, I will. Um, Mr. Aldred was a bomber pilot, and he was the booming voice of CBC Radio in the 1950s, 1960s. So he's kind of like the Peter Mansbridge of, uh, of the early years. And at some Air Commonwealth reunions that were held in Winnipeg in the, in the 80s, we had an opportunity to give a presentation, and the study members had commissioned a painting of this Lancaster, and he presented it to Dr. Matthewson. Ten years later was the 50th anniversary of the study, uh, July 1st, 1998. And um, Dr. Cuddy and I put together a program for two days where we invited as many of the study members from across the country who could come to Winnipeg to come for a two-day conference. We um, presented grand rounds and, and a presentation to them at a big banquet in the Brody Atrium. And so 120 of our study members, many of whom may not have even seen each other since the war years, if at all, came. And that was really our first opportunity to put <coughs> names and faces with, with lots of uh, our members. Um, we did the plenary session at the Center on Aging Spring Symposium in 2002. The five gentlemen sitting in the front row are Manitoba follow-up study members who lived in Winnipeg, and they came and, and participated in that event. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Willis uh, Wilson in the blue, second from the right, is, is the only surviving member in that group. A um, few years ago, I was invited to, to give the plenary address at the uh, University of Victoria Spring Symposium. Um, unlike the Spring Symposium at the University of Manitoba that's held in May, they have spring in February, so it was in February in Victoria. And, and knowing that I was able to go out there a day ahead of time, um, we sent letters to all the study members or contacted who lived on Vancouver Island and asked them whether they'd like to come and have dinner with Dr. Tate. So these fellows all came, many of them with their wives or a family member, to a restaurant for lunch. And, uh, and it was just a wonderful opportunity. Um, some of you might know Dr. Richard Stanwyck, who's the medical officer on Vancouver Island. And he came and, and it was very recognizable to people in Victoria and, and spoke to them as well. And uh, it was a wonderful day and an opportunity to meet the study members. The man in the brown jacket in the bottom right-hand corner of the picture is uh, Mr. Fawcett, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about him. <coughs> he was um, 94 in this picture. He looks pretty good. Here's when he was 90. So he rides a gold-wing motorcycle. It's a great big motorcycle. Um, some of us may know what those are like. And he uh, rode his motorcycle from Victoria to New York to the Aspen Cade uh, Motorcycle Reunion. And you know, for somebody who's nine years old to ride a huge motorcycle like that is pretty incredible, let alone go it for 10,000 kilometers. And so a few years later, he sent me another picture, and now he's riding a 750 Honda Shadow. He downsized a little bit. He said the big motorcycle is getting too heavy to push around in the driveway. And then three years later, he sent me this picture. <laughs> and so I think some of this is uh, kind of ties in with what Audrey's studying in terms of primary control and secondary control and how people might adapt a little bit. Uh, Mr. Higgum lives in, in Toronto. He, he flew many bombing missions. And uh, when he came back, he was an Air Canada pilot for the rest of his career. He lives in Toronto now and uh, has taken up woodworking. So he sent us a picture of his, uh, of his woodworking skills and notes that they're for sale. So. Uh, I know, I suppose, that I've purchased one of these, and so has Madge right now. Um, we've talked a fair amount about the successful aging questionnaire, and on our questionnaire, on the last page, we have a section that says, you know, what's your definition of successful aging? A bunch of lines, and they write things in. Um, Mr. Mr. Higgum wrote me a poem about 
called Successful Aging, and I'd like to read it to you. So instead of writing his narrative, he, he composed this poem for him. And he said, when you take too many pills for your body's malfunctions and your brain is a whirl with impossible options, when your kids are retired and full of advice, and when the kids on the street think you're not very nice, when your legs start to cramp in the cold and the damp, 